Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your Raw review. You know, how much more boring can this show possibly get? So I said Hell in a Cell wasn't bad, but the thing was it was hampered by a lot of lame finishes. The finish in the main event just left a bad taste in my mouth. So, you know, let's just get right to it. We started off with Brock um, Lesnar getting called out by... Roman Reigns and uh, Braun Strowman, of course, you know, Brock's not there. And, I, you know, I got to say, I'm getting fucking sick and tired. I've said this for months now. Brock Lesnar is not that much of a draw. So I don't know why they put so much stock and time into Brock Lesnar and all this. You know, something, if they were really, you know, um, attributing, you know, real focus into building up a match for Brock, then they'd have Brock be there. You're already paying the guy, what, $6 million, $7 million to do, you know, like six appearances a year. You'd think maybe you could pay him just a bit more so he could appear on more shows because it's not really affecting the ratings. People know how this goes. It's just like how it was. Hell in a Cell, he's going to appear. We won't see him for another three weeks. So um, uh, this brings out... Corbin and Corbin says that you know they're gonna have a match um, in Saudi Arabia November second, I believe, the Crown Jewel. So you know they're going back to Saudi Arabia, and we all know how this goes. You know the women are not gonna compete. So it's really funny here. It's like so they're gonna have this WWE Evolution pay per view with all women, right? No men. So, so now I see why they're doing the pay-per-view. Because they faced a lot of backlash earlier in the year when they had the greatest Royal Rumble. Now it's like the crown jewel. And, and it's like, what is up with these like weird uh, titles for these, these events for Saudi Arabia as well? Greatest Royal Rumble. Like the, the Royal Rumble you have at the beginning of the year, that, that's not good enough. But, but when it's in Saudi Arabia, it's the greatest, motherfucker. It's the greatest. Now it's like the crown jewel. It's like, I, like what kind of title is that for a pay-per-view? It just doesn't sound like a wrestling pay-per-view, you know? Like, I, I think back, no mercy, unforgiving, no even hell in a cell. Crown jewel, like. Anyway, so there's going to be a triple threat match. Brock, Reigns, Strowman. This brings out Heyman, and Heyman does his spiel. Strowman um, is upset. You know, he says that everybody sucks. He leaves the ring, but Heyman comes out. And, like, I find it funny how Heyman's doing his whole spiel on the entrance ramp saying Brock Lesnar's got pull. Strowman just stares at him. And he waits for him to get through the whole fucking three-minute promo. And then he decides to make his way towards Heyman and, like, chase him off. Like, is nobody... Like, Elias could get interrupted a thousand times. But, God forbid somebody interrupts or cuts Heyman's promo short or we get, like, some sort of abridged version of it. No, there's no chance that's happening. Unless Heyman can get every single word out, the, the promo's not ending. It's ridiculous already. You know, we've heard the same fucking promo, just with little things switched around. Now it's with the UFC references. Time and time again. I've, like, had enough already of hearing this shit. It's, you know, it's, it's the same fucking deal. And they had a chance to change that when they had Brock turning on Heyman, but they had to go right back to doing the same thing. Like, like, what is it with WWE? Reigns can't turn heel. Cena can't turn heel. They can't turn Brock against Heyman. What is it with them? They, they, they're, they're like forcing Matt Hardy to retire because they booked him so shittily. It, it, it's like, what is this company's deal with not taking a fucking chance? It's got to be the same fucking cookie cutter shit night after night. No changes, no nothing. I, I mean, you know, at this point, it's like, it's not going to ruin your Fox deal. Fox, obviously, if they saw this shit and they still want to buy it, they would have bought it regardless. 
Then we had uh, Drew McIntyre defeating Dean Ambrose. And, you know, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, I'm happy that they're giving, like, Drew McIntyre, like, a nice clean win here. But, you know, Ambrose just returned, you know, and he's, like, already losing. You know, like I said, I I've said this for years now. Where's the momentum? How come no one's allowed to go on a winning streak or look strong? It's got to be like this guy wins and this guy loses. You know, it, it's just, you know, last night um, the, at the Hell in a Cell, the previous night, because today's Tuesday, uh, you know, you could say, well, okay, Brad, you're being a hypocrite because that, that was, you know, a no contest at, at Hell in a Cell. And so, you know, that that was a way of not having a winner and a loser. Yeah, I get that. But that was a Hell in the Cell match that was so ridiculously fucking overbooked where they had fucking people falling off the cage that weren't even in the fucking match. Right? So, not only that, but it's like they hit each other with all this shit and Brock Lesnar coming in and hitting them with a table. And I understand he, like, viciously attacked them. But then the show just goes off the air with no finish at all. It, it, it was like you wasted our time after 30 fucking minutes of not having it, no conclusion. So, you know, it, it, it's like, I understand it's like I'm making it seem like they're damned if they do and they, they're damned if they don't. But the thing is, like I said, figure it out! They never had this problem before. You know, in the past, with people getting over, now all of a sudden, it's a major issue. It's like, you know, people lose. It's like, and, you know, it's like, if you can't figure out who to have as the winner, just don't have the match. Just do something else. Chad, K Chad Gable defeated Victor, you know, uh, Bobby Roode's really happy at ringside. I came to WWE to do absolutely fucking jack shit. Hey! Hey! Hey, but, but guys, remember, as long as you smile and you're happy to be there, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. As long as you're happy and you smile. Hey. 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 Ah! Like, they brought in Bobby Roode to do this shit. Michael Cole says, Chad Gable is fun to watch. Hey. I'm happy you're having a good time, Michael Cole. What a sequence! Seth Rollins burned it down! C can they, like, tell Michael Cole to just, like, thank you for your services, pay him whatever he's owed, pay, pay out the rest of his WWE contract, and send him on his fucking way? I'm sure the man's made enough money already. And, you know, I, I've just really... Had it up to here with all his lame ass fucking, you know, quips at ringside. I don't know what it is, but like at Hell in the Cell, that guy really fucking just pissed me off. Like he just, it's almost like he buried the matches, the way how he was reacting during them. Like no enthusiasm. Meanwhile, you've got shitty ass NXT. Where, you know, I, I know a lot of people go, oh, it's better than Raw. Okay, I get it, but that's not what I'm reviewing here. And I'm sorry, but NXT isn't that great, guys. Let's be perfectly honest. But you've got Moro Ranallo, who I, I absolutely love this guy. And, you know, I was watching his reactions uh, for the last NXT TakeOver. And, and the one he even did before that. This guy is jumping up and down like a man. Mamma mia, mama! You know, he's like fucking going nuts. The guy's into the show and I was like, damn. I mean, like, I don't know what the fuck he was watching. It, it, you know, he was probably watching, you know, that fucking, uh, the guy who was um, Paul McCannon, right? It, it, you know, with the, uh, the guy with the beard now, that's with Jardy Gargano. How do you say his name? Champanto motherfuckery. I, I don't know his name. Because I, I don't watch NXT, I'm sorry, but watching Raw is enough. And I know you're going to have the 
minority on here is like, well, Brad, then why don't you just review NXT and stop watching this shitty show? Let me tell you something. I did NXT reviews. Barely anybody even wanted to watch the, the NXT uh, pay-per-view pay pay reviews that I was doing. So it's not even fucking worth my time, really. If no one's going to even watch the video, then you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's like I, I'm not going to sit there and watch a show that I know that I'm not going to enjoy and no one's going to watch the video. People watch these. Enough people watch it and enjoy them where I'm going to do the video. So, you know, I'm going to do the video on the WWE pay-per-views. I'll put myself to torture to entertain you for, for these uh, shows, but the NXT ones, no. But, like, the point is, Moro Ronaldo is a great fucking announcer. And the fact that he's not on the uh, main roster shows, the fact that we need to listen to Corey Graves on two fucking shows and Moro Ronaldo isn't even on one of them is fucking criminal as fuck. I mean, like, you know, JBL is gone. Can we bring them back already? You're fucking wait. You know what? If Corey Graves loves, you know, the, uh, to do, you know, the announcing, he's got to be on. Every put him on NXT. You can put him on NXT and put him on a WWE show and, and give more right now on one of the shows. Give him Raw. Give him, you know, and you've got what's his name? The, who's the lead guy on SmackDown? I can never even fucking remember his name ever. Oh, Tom Phillips. Why can't we... Th this That guy is so fucking boring. Uh, you you know, the fact that Moro Ronaldo sat in his seat prior is just a fucking disgrace. It really is. No offense to Tom Phillips fans, but that's how I feel about it. This These announcers are fucking boring as shit. The only time I thought we had any sort of entertainment was Booker T and Coach to a lesser degree. But at least those guys broke up the monotony. And I'll give credit. I hear Renee Young is trying. But I still hear like Michael Cole and Graves giving her a fucking hard time. Like, oh, you shouldn't say this and you shouldn't say that live on the fucking air. I, I, I mean. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's like, you know, the announcing shouldn't be that hard to do. It's like, how did we far, how did we fall so far? You know, we had uh, all these great announce teams, you know, throughout the years. And even Vince McMahon was a great announcer. You know, we had Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heaton, Jesse Ventura, JR, the King. You, you know, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? Even Al Snow and Coach were better. I mean, man, Matt Stryker, it's just, you know, these all these people were fucking better than what we have now. Corey Graves and Michael Cole suck. And Byron Sex Addict is abysmal. And Tom Phillips is a fucking bore as well. Just because Tom, Tom Phillips has a good voice, he has a good voice, he does. But the things that he says with that voice is, are bad. Or uninspired. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. So, yeah, we were talking about Chad Gable. I don't know how the fuck we, we got there. You know, talking about announcers, but whatever. You know, that's a, a much needed detour as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, Connor attacks uh, Rude um, and Gable at the end of the match. They knock heads together. They're laid out. Okay, so, you know. This feud with the Ascension is like, it's going to be like like the Bobby Roode, um, uh, Mojo. And where is Mojo Raleigh, right? Weren't they staying committed? I liked Mojo's aggression. Where Where is he? Where's No Way Jose? Remember all, all these feuds? They're gone. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Bobby Roode for like a month after this feud. This, this, this team's not going to succeed. Especially when they're starting off like this. Like, I'm already falling asleep here. Uh, Undertaker came out to cut a promo, and this was the best part of the show. Uh, you know, Taker's there, Triple H is not, so again, we're playing this game. And now, K 
Kane is going to be in Undertaker's corner. Shawn Michaels is going to be in Triple H's corner. And, and here's the thing. And this is why I said we need to, like, kill kayfabe. Like I said, either keep kayfabe and respect it or fucking kill that fucking bullshit altogether. So, you know, I'm looking on Instagram. You know, uh, you, you can see Michelle McCool's Instagram, Undertaker's wife. We're seeing all these photos and, you know, the dead man is like, you know, is doing heavy squats and shit like that. You know, and kayfabe is like, you know, you'd think that probably he'd be bench pressing like a fucking, uh, you know, like rocks from hell at the end of, of, of each end of the, of the Olympic bar. You know, I, I, I'm just saying it's like you want to paint this story that he's still the dead man and everything. I said they should have went back to the biker gimmick a long time ago. At least that's, you know, believable. No kayfabe needed there, you know, but like. Kane is the fucking mayor. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, Kurt Angle is playing up the kayfabe, you know, like he's been put on vacation on Instagram. Uh, you know, and I'm just saying, like, Kane's the fucking mayor now. now I'm not saying I shouldn't do it. I'm not going to be, like, one of those people. But I, I'm just saying, like, you know, he, he's going to come back, obviously, with the mask on. And... We all know that he's mayor, and we're not, you know, and are we really going to buy that he's the, the devil's favorite demon anymore? I mean, I'm sorry, but when, you know, Kane has, like, deleted all the wrestling from his, like, Instagram, or maybe he never had wrestling to begin with. I only saw his Instagram after he uh, became mayor. I don't know if he created for that purpose, but, but the... The fact of the matter is, is he really going to come out with the mask in Australia? A and we're going to, like, believe that he's this Kane character again? When Glenn Jacobs is the fucking mayor? I, I mean, like, do you see how ridiculous this is? And I know people are going to say, oh, but, you know, it's acting, right? So it's like, you know, um... You know, Clint Eastwood plays Dirty Harry, but then, you know, we see him not as Dirty Harry on the red carpet. Okay, you know, it's like this is a little bit different, the wrestling world, though. It's like it looks a bit ridiculous that you're like the mayor and then you're going to hop into the wrestling ring with a fucking goofy-ass mask on your face. I, I, I'm just saying it's like this is a little bit hard to believe because it's not a movie. It's like these are events, you know, and it's just, I'm sorry, but I know people are going to probably feel differently, but I think that this just looks fucking ridiculous to do. It, it, it's like when he became mayor, Kane's wrestling career should have been over. And, and you know, it, it's not that I don't want to see Kane and everything. I love Kane, and he's always going to be one of my favorites, but... I mean, after the guy got involved in politics, you know, when he won office, it's like, now it's time to fucking step away. Um, Bailey defeated Dana Brooks. So, you know, oh my God. Bailey and Sasha, like, it, I mean, it, it's hard to believe that, like, what was it, like two years ago, you had Bailey. Uh, having a, uh, the first ever women's Hell in the Cell match. And then we fast forward two years later, and she's not even on the fucking card. And, you know, Dana Brooke, like, she broke away from Titus Worldwide, and she's just losing here. So it's like, so we did this whole storyline, or, or, you know, whatever storyline that could possibly be, with Brooke. Breaking off from Titus Worldwide. She's going to be on her own now. And here she is, like, first match back on Raw and already losing. And what are they doing with Bailey and Sasha? Why are they, are they a tag team? Like, you know, this is not a... Like, so they're done with the Riot Squad. Now there's no other tag teams for them to face. So what's the point of them being a tag team? Set, uh, no, uh, um, the, blah, 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 blah. Authors of Pain defeated two jobbers. So, 
You know, Rockstar spuds with them now. I, I, I don't know, like, what are they doing with these guys? Like, jobber match after jobber match. So, they they moved up to Titus World. Well, I think, what was it? Titus World Wide, was that the only tag team they actually faced? So, they faced jobbers for a week. For weeks. And then they... they um, they they went uh, a few matches with Titus Worldwide for like about a month. Now Rockstar Spud's gonna put them on the map, and they're back to facing jobbers again. Like, all right, so they got with Rockstar Spud to take a step back. Seth Rollins. Um, Defeated Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler agreed to a match when uh, he thought that that Rollins wasn't there and he was going to be awarded the title, but Rollins showed up. Um, these guys weren't selling during the match at all. They just fell off the side of a hell in the cell. So, so Rollins comes into the arena selling, but he doesn't sell during the match. You know, fuck this guy already, honestly. I am going to say it right here, right now. To me, Seth Rollins is like one of the worst fucking people on the fucking roster. You don't know what you're talking about, bro. He, he's great. Shut up! This guy, not only does he sound like this, not only does he not sell, not only does he do a fucking superplex, he just fell off hell in a cell, and he's doing a superplex, he fell back first through the, the mouse table, he does a superplex and he still gets up to do another one. Fuck Seth Rollins! Fuck him! He's horrible! No, I'm sorry. Like, I don't try to, like, blame wrestlers for the way, you know, the show comes up. No, but this is Seth Rollins. I saw Ronda Rousey, who just got into the wrestling business at the beginning of the fucking year. And she was selling her ass off at Hell in a Cell. Best selling I saw all year. All fucking year. That's not hyperbole. That I'm, I mean it. She sold those ribs through the whole fucking match. Seth Rollins can't be bothered to sell for one goddamn second during this match. After falling off the top the side of the cell. Anyway... He should be selling it no matter what the fuck it is. It was supposed to be a big spot, so sell it. Another reason why you see spots like that, why'd they even do it? It doesn't even fucking matter. If you're going to act like it didn't happen, then everyone else is going to act like it didn't happen. So Rollins retains. Ronda Rousey. Issues an open challenge. Um, the Riot Squad comes out. Ruby Riot is going to accept the challenge. But for some reason, the Riot Squad just all runs into the ring. So, like, how is she going to accept the challenge if they all run into the ring? Or whatever. Uh, so, this brings out um, Nat, uh, Natalia and, um, and uh, the Bellas. And they all fend off the Riot Squad. Okay, you know, so... Uh, uh, you know, that, that, that was the follow-up to that match, I guess. Oh, God. You, you, you know, like, that's what Ronda Rousey does. You know, it's like, all these wrestlers, there's no, like, storyline for them. So they just all issue open challenges for their title. So it's either, I'm issuing an open challenge. You, you know, or it's like, with the U.S. title, it was like an open challenge and all that. It's just like, everyone's doing open challenges. And 
to tell you the truth, it's like, okay, Cena started off and it had a purpose. Now everyone's doing them and they mean jack shit. Like, like everyone in the, in the fucking company is doing an open challenge when they got the belt. Reigns is doing an open challenge. Seth Rollins is doing an open challenge. Like, everyone is doing a fucking open challenge. Like, there ain't one wrestler that hasn't issued one. It's like, you know, it loses a little bit of its luster when everyone is just having an impromptu match. It shows that, like, the writers can't be bothered to write a fucking show, the format of show. It's just, oh, you were just getting the wrestlers come out there and just have a random person get come out. You know, to follow this up, like, Ronda Rousey being a big star like this, to not have a program set to go after the one ends with Alexa Bliss... And I didn't like this. She's complimenting Alexa Bliss and all this after, you know, Bliss made fun of her and all that. She's like, oh, you know, I want to give, you know, I want to, you know, she, I didn't expect that out of her. She did a good job, you know, like, give me a fucking break. I, I'm sick and tired of the smiling routine, not just from her, but all the other wrestlers. You know, that was a good show of sportsmanship. Fuck that. The attitude here and the rules of aggression here, and no one thanked the person, for, oh, thanks for a great match. Like, fuck out of here with that shit. Gr a great match. Who cares about having a great match? It's supposed to be about kicking each other's asses. And if you lose, that's tough on you. Good for me, I won. You, you know what I mean? It's like, like, what is this? Like, hey guys, practice good sportsmanship, be a star. Like, I'm so sick and tired of this mentality. It's fucking wrestling. I'm sorry, but no one is going to accept it in the outside world. It doesn't matter. Susan G. Coleman, we're going to do that next month. Connor's Cure. You know, you've got Roman Reigns, you know, uh, spearing another man through a fucking table, and he's wearing a Connor's Cure thing. Let's cure cancer, but we're kicking people's asses at the same fucking time. I mean, you know, like, there was no problem, you know, when they would show, like, Mick Foley doing, um, you know, a little thing for, for, like, charity just once in a while. But now it's, like, a new charity every month. And it's like, this is a violent show. You've got a man... Putting a screwdriver through another man's ear, and and and, and tonight we're show, uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks are dancing with cancer patients. I, I I mean, like, what show am I watching? What universe am I fucking in? Choose what you want to be. You want to be a wrestling company, or you want to be like a goodwill organization? I don't care, but everyone's still going to think this is trailer park trash. It's fucking pro wrestling. No one's going to ever accept it. Elias, um, you know, started cutting a promo on Bobby Lashley, which brought out Lilo, Leo Rush. Not Lilo, like Lilo and Stitch. Leo Rush. No reaction. Nobody knows where he is. I liked when Elias said, you know... Um, so, so somebody gets security and find this guy's parents. Uh, he, he, this brings out Bobby Lashley. Kevin Owens interferes. It's just like, oh my god, this is a fucking mess. Like, like who is this guy? They just bring him out out of fucking nowhere. Leo Rush. Uh, you know, he just does this fast talking thing. It, it, it's like. He, he looks like a nobody. They put sunglasses on to try to attempt to make him look like a star. He's not a star. Bobby Lashley, like, random feuds. He's, you know, he has a feud with Elias. Then he stops having a feud with him. Now he starts it back up. And, oh, wait, Kevin Owens is in a feud with him, too. So, it, it, it's like, what are we doing here? Who's got a feud with you, with who? Who's doing what? Uh, like, this is such a waste of, you know, of Bobby Lashley's talents, of, yes, even the talents of Kevin Owens and Elias. Like, 
these guys are just going around in a circle. They've they're they're not progressing towards anything. They're not developing anyone's character. They're wasting our time. They're wasting their time. They're, they're they're it's just a waste of time to get to point A to point B, just so they could do something. Just so they could do something with these guys, so they could say they did something with them, without really making any effort at all to try to do anything. Nia Jax comes back out of nowhere. Was she injured? Did they have nothing for her? I don't know. They don't tell us. And Ember Moon, and they defeat um, uh, Mickey James and Alicia Fox. So, you know, Alexa Bliss lost last night. Did they try to get her heat back in any way? No. Did she cut a promo? No. Did she do anything of any sort to try to build up to her match with Trish Stratus? No. If she loses a match, you think maybe they could try to get her heat back. You know, no appearance by Trish. No, nothing like that. Just, you know, just a random tag match here with Nia Jax returning out of nowhere. Promo from Nia Jax maybe to, you know, say that she's back. No, you know, no, no efforts made. Let's just have a match. That's it. You know, Michael Cole, what a return for Nia Jax. Yeah, she got a win in the match. You know, we didn't, we don't know where she's been, what she's been up to. Don't bother to fill us in on that. But by 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 golly, she won a match. Then in the main event, it was Roman Reigns defeating uh, Baron Corbin. So, you know, it was the same shit like last night. Shield runs out. McIntyre and Ziggler run out. You know, they brawl. And um, uh, Roman Reigns hits the spear on Corbin. And, that, you know, that's the end of the match. So, you know... It was nice to have a little title match here, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, what, what the fuck happened on this episode of Raw? So, you know, you've got this big show in Australia. There's no, you know, they're, they're, they're so excited, the announcers, they're looking forward to it. But there's nothing on the show here to, like, you know, get us excited. Like, why should I give a fuck? about the show in Australia. Why should I care about the Evolution pay-per-view? You know, th these are the matches. Bailey and Dana Brooke, Nia Jax, you know, returning. They can't even bother to tell us where she's been. I I you know, th this is the build for, you know, for Evolution, this, this big pay-per-view, where you have a match with Mickey James and Lita scheduled. But... Like, Lita's nowhere to be found. What, is she going to show up? At the, is she going to just show up at the pay-per-view and they're just going to have the match? You're booking matches on the first ever pay-per-view for women. And you can't be bothered to even build up for it. Oh, that's uh, Mickey James, Lita. That, that, that'll be a good match. No build necessary. Like, honestly, like there's, there's no effort at all. No effort in anything that they do. They, you know what I mean? It just shows, like, you want to have the first ever women's baby. Oh, it's historic. It's Hey, guys, it's historic. Hey, 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 you, it's historic. Yeah, it's historic. Okay, great. First women's pay-per-view. Great. TNA's done that before. Oh, great. Yo, yo we're not going to acknowledge that. But all, all right, you know, great. But, but okay, so you know what? So, so then make the effort. Make it feel truly historic. Oh, historic. Yay, historic. Oh. Make it feel genuinely historic. Put the effort into it. Like, wow. They really want to put this pay-per-view over. And they really want it to succeed. But I'm not getting that from them. I, all I'm seeing is like, this is just a fucking throwaway pay-per-view. Just so they can say that they did something. It's just going to be like the Women's Royal Rumble that they had at the, at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. They're going to put the, the you know, put Asuka over, but, but look where she is now. Like, you know, we're going to be historic. We're going to have the first ever Japanese winner of the Royal Rumble. But we're not going to be bothered to, you know, have them win any title or anything like that. You know, it just, it just shows. It's like... They, they, they want to say that they did something, 
But like when we look back on it, are we going to remember it fondly? Or are we just going to remember it as like, oh yeah, WWE did this thing and it was a giant colossal failure. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go with the latter. I mean, like, this pay-per-view is shaping up to be a disaster and people are saying otherwise. But where's the build for this show? Whether we get to the pay-per-view and say we had good matches or not, I'm going to remember how it was building up to the show. And you showed Trish Stratus once... And that's it. That's the only build we've had for the show so far. It's just Trish Stratus showing up one time. And that was it. And most of the promo that she cut was with Elias, who's not even going to be on the fucking show. So, it's like, why do they bother? If they're going to have and play to this niche audience that they have, and they're going to watch no matter what. What is the point of even going through with these pay-per-views and everything like that? You, you know, it, it's like, you know, you're going to go through the trouble of putting on a whole other pay-per-view. And it doesn't even matter. Half the people don't give a shit. Or if they're saying that they do care, they're just being phonies. Because they want other people on the internet to look at them. They want them to look at their, their tweets on Twitter and their videos here on YouTube. Oh, that, that, that guy there, he's a good person because he supports women. And, and he supports the first ever women's pay-per-view. I mean, you know, it, it, it's like I said, it, it's like, you know, I'm not saying that I don't support women wrestling or anything like that. But if you're trying to put the concept over, put the effort into it to try to make it seem like it's somewhat of a big deal. You know what I'm saying? You can't just say, oh, well, we're excited for it. Oh, okay, great. So what are you excited for exactly? You know, you're excited because you're going to, you know, make a payday. You're going to get paid for coal in this pay-per-view, Michael Cole. But for the rest of us that just have to watch it and give you our money to watch it, well, we're not exactly as thrilled. Just saying. Anyway, guys, there you go. There's your Raw review. Boring show. This Evolution pay-per-view. They're not even putting any effort into building it up. Please subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you're still subscribed. Because, you know, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people for whatever reason. Um, you know, click the bell so you get notifications when I post all my new videos. Check out the videos I have posted here. And this has been your YWC Champ. And I'm signing out. Thank you for watching.